Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is Lover in the Ice. It was written by Caleb Stokes, and it's part of the Delta Green universe. I'm your game master, and this is episode two. Our recap will be given by Brian Daly as his character, Jared Lansnicht. So, without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Brian? Sierra, 3-4. Highly classified. Access authorization code, Papa Mike Sierra, 3-4-3-5. GB-224. Missive 01. To Special Agent H. Arrival on site successful. Cover holding. GB-224 was found to be compromised by inclement weather. Surveillance footage from the site has been procured. Analysis pending. At some point between the 2nd and 4th, friendly Mills broke protocol and investigated GB-224. It is assumed that during the unauthorized investigation, Mills was contaminated with an unknown organism, designation GB-224-A. Agents on site have secured found contents of GB-224, catalog pending. Notable details on GB-224-A. Contamination with GB-224-A appears to have drastic effects on the host's mind and biology. GB-224-A is a black, worm-like organism, approximately two feet long, with a buccal funnel ringed with teeth at the head, and terminating in a bulbous growth with tendrils and needle-like appendages, presumably to facilitate control over the host. An unidentified orange liquid appears to be produced and secreted by the organism. GB-224-A is likely to enter the mouth of a potential host, then reside in the esophagus and stomach, controlling or influencing the body through the tendrils and injections of the unknown fluid. The interaction between GB-224-A and the host seems to be highly detrimental to the host. The subject's body was emaciated and showing signs of severe dehydration. Upon investigation of the subject's residence, it was discovered that a large amount of pornography had been plastered on every surface within reach, and that the initial temperature of the residence had been set high, estimated at above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Great quantities of ejaculate were also observed on multiple surfaces. Upon discovering the intrusion, the subject attacked agents W, C, and D, and was neutralized. No contamination of the agents was observed. The remains of GB-224-A were removed from the subject's body and bagged for future examination. Agent D made note that sustaining the assumed level of arousal for the amount of time witnessed should have caused the subject to faint, and that the quantity of ejaculate observed should not be possible without the subject dying of dehydration. Further analysis of GB-224-A unable to be performed without appropriate facilities. Options are storage or incineration. Further investigation of the subject's residence, pending. Excellent. So, uh, we will begin with the people in uh, Skip Mill's home. So, at the moment, you are still in the living room. I would like you to all do, uh, if you have... Um, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, uh, uh, human intelligence, uh, or uh, I guess that's psychology. Uh, that, that's good, human intelligence. I have success. As do I. I have a, I have a success. Okay. Um, you begin to notice a kind of pattern uh, to the way things <clears throat> are laid out. You know that um, he seems to have plastered all of the walls and furniture, even the door, with pornography. Uh, from his incredibly violent attack on you, it's almost as if he was trying to him himself in to create a barrier around him that would distract him from possibly leaving and doing damage to somebody on the outside. 
uh, all of his actions seem to be that he was trying to prevent something worse from happening by venting it here with all of this pornography and so forth. Because otherwise, he didn't seem like the kind of a person, you know, to be obsessed with pornography or anything like that. Obviously, that thing was controlling him. But he was struggling against it. You also notice that this is not the house of a batch, a male bachelor only. There are a lot of little details in the house that would indicate that there is a woman's touch uh, but a woman's touch that is matronly, his mother. I think we know he lived with his mom. Did someone mention that beforehand? Yes. At the office, I believe, yes. <clears throat> oh, no. I don't really want to go look for mother. We have to. We need to go see if there's other victims before we blow this place up or set it on fire or whatever we decide to do with it. Uh, the area doesn't need to be cleansed, but um, ideally in a manner that uh, doesn't draw or attract undue attention. Well, maybe they got a basement. What are we going to do with this organism? Well, it's jarred right now. Um, I don't think we'll have I don't think we'll have access to any sort of facilities that we can do a proper autopsy, taxonomy, anything on it. Um, so either we <clears throat> preserve it somehow or we dispose of it. I'm all, all right. for disposal. Uh, Jared, do an idea roll. Intelligence roll. That's pass. Um... A lot of the town right now is is abandoned, especially any kind of work, working facilities. There are probably some facilities somewhere in town or the university or or the college or the high school even that might have equipment that you could use if you wanted to do a stronger analysis, even medical supply stores in town or something. They might be closed, but that doesn't necessarily have to stop you. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. Okay. We've got a more pressing right, investigation right now. The house to see if there's another. Uh, to see if we can find the mother. Yep. All right. Well, let's jump to the other two for a moment. Um, Agent Forrest and uh, Agent Weathers. Uh, you're standing in the shelter. The snow is still coming down outside. Uh, so part of it is still coming into the um, the, the shelter. Um, the things are scattered about. Obviously, the tree limb hit the side of the building. It knocked over one of the shelves. There are objects on the ground. Um, most of the things are boxed up or bagged up. Um, I believe in the last episode, you said that you sort of gathered them out of the weather. That's um, correct. So uh, it's a question of whether... You want to do any kind of cursory examination now, or if you want to wait until the guys come back for you, and you'll have to figure out a place to, to move all this stuff. Uh, has Keys returned from the office yet? Uh, yes, Keys has returned, and he's got the, uh, the video recording yep. device. Okay, and uh, the grand total of this stuff, is it, uh, is it, light enough for us to actually move to a secondary location? Uh, yes, but there are there are a total of 10 well, let me, let me I'm going to generalize. There are 10 items, okay? But some okay. of those items are a box of stuff and some of them are a bag of stuff. Gotcha. Um, would it be feasible for the two of us to basically uh, pile it all up more or less in our arms and take it uh, to, mm, let's say, the front office. Uh, you'd have to take make, take multiple trips. Most most of the things would would you couldn't carry more than one thing at a time. 
Okay, uh, I'm not letting them out of my sight, so I'm uh, I'm gonna stay here. I uh, I look over at Keys and say, "Well, what do you think? Should we uh, go ahead and start uh, goal number two, which is documentation, or should we wait for the guys?" Uh, well, well, we could um, you know, do a little bit of a a look at it. Bit of a cursory examination, maybe? I don't know, just a little. We don't have to go for a detail at the minute. We can wait for the others, but. All right, I uh, shove the, uh, what is it, uh, packs of uh, notebooks into his hand and say, some light reading for you and some light reading for me then, and I'll go right to that uh, computer printout. All right. Um... You can see that most of the paper items have been weather damaged, uh, but um, the computer printout uh, is almost uh, four feet high. Mm -hmm. um, it, <clears throat> it appears to be a list of uh, information, uh, entries uh, that are our names followed by some information. I'm assuming that you take some time to go oh, through yeah. this. So this is kind of the summary as you go. Mm. You realize as you go that they are in alphabetical order. Subject, Albernathy Aaron. P, SS number, redacted, male Caucasian, Right-handed, glove size, thirty or sorry, twenty-three centimeters. Uh, preferred leather. Mm, leather in black or dark brown. Does not trim nails until they exceed one point seven five millimeters. Cuticles need trimming. Bites left, uh, causing rough edges. Webbing brand tan. Sorry. Wedding band, tan lines, but no ring for three years, four months previous. Black hair on knuckles, seven millimeter scar on right metacarpal index finger from carving accident in wood shop, senior year high school, fall semester 1994. Subject, Aber Aberntson. Amelia? Hmm. C. So security number, redacted, female Caucasian, left handed, glove size, small, 16 centimeters. Isotoners in white or light beige, nail length, 4 centimeters, cuticles acceptable, prefers pink shades of nail polish, slight fungal infection on right pinky nail, unaware. Married, possibly because of, un or sorry, unmarried, unmarried be possibly because of unattractive hands, three millimeter dark spot on left ring finger knuckle, palm of hand shows single heart and headline instead of single heart Separate. and, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, and uh, it just keeps going like that. 250,000 entries. Yeah. The last okay. one. Oh, sure. Sorry. Zumbrowski, Harvey, so security number redacted. Male Caucasian, right handed, glove size large, 22 centimeters. Missing, or sorry, black cotton, yellow rubber, knuckle riding. Knuckle riding gloves. Hmm. Interesting. Missing tip of left ring finger. Bandsaw accident, June 2001. Mortal. Right hand. Oh, sure. Sorry, my, my skip to mortal because okay. that was weird. <laughs> right hand used to staunch puncture wound in abdomen. Mortal. Rupture spleen. 
and perforated bowel. Death in two minutes, 19 seconds. Flames. Huh. That's interesting. It seems to be a list of 250,000 people. Forest, what? What? What is? What is that? What the that that last one there was about uh, somebody dying, uh, succumbing to their wounds. Uh, kind of homed in on the uh, mortal there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of hand stuff. It's all there's hand a lot. Stuff, right? There's a lot of hand stuff, but that's also the first time that uh, they used mortal. I'm not sure whether or not they were saying that the wounds were mortal or whether it was an issue of that happened to be the only one that was considered to be mortal. Uh, yeah, um, do a things. spot hidden agent for us. Okay, is this a awareness? Or... Awareness, sorry. Okay, uh, 37. That's a pass. <clears throat> Sorry, when, I uh, we don't have hearts. <clears throat> when Agent Keys is not looking directly at you, uh, you quickly flip through the stack and you find your name mm. and a perfect description of your hand. Mm. Both hands, right or left, any uh, emphasis taken to either one of them? Um, well, let's just say that it's unnerving enough that if you had a scar or something on one of your hands, it would be described. Mm. If you had an odd mole or a thing, if, you're, if you were divorced and your ring, your ring was missing, it would mention it. Mm. Um, and it mentions something about your hand that maybe only occurred a few weeks ago. Oh, okay. That was my next question. So yeah, do a sanity roll. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a pass. Okay, just take one point of damage. Okay. That's freaky. Very unnerving. Um, Alex, uh, yes. you uh, pick up a, a valise that has a number of papers inside of it. Okay. Yep. Um, you, uh, you undo it. And what you see at first is very strange. There's, there's a collection of things that have been pulled together. And uh, hmm. they're all maps of a uh, part of Chicago. They have scribbles on them. What the and fuck? they have uh, some strange... Well, you can see it's pointing to some place called Shambless Meatpacking. The fuck are these weird symbols? Um, do you know Yiddish? <laughs> nope. Yeah. So, uh, other than that, you can't tell. Now, each of these things, this valise has a number of folders. Each folder uh, is um, dated. Uh, they are dated from, oops, where's my cheat sheet? Why does my cheat sheet always disappear? I'm <laughs> looking. Um, they are dated from uh, 1910 to 1924. Uh, the, uh, they seem to be uh, documented by a Mr. Abner Leibowitz. Uh, who is a city of Chicago cartographer. And there are 14 maps in total. And they all are of the Stockyard District in Chicago. Um, and there's scribbles all over them, but you're not exactly sure what they mean. You'll have to maybe do some analysis or look some stuff up on the internet. Uh, when you get back to where you are. Yeah. All right, so let's jump to the others again. Okay. All right, you guys are still in the living room. What are you going to do? We need to search the rest of the house. 
All right. Room by room. Mm -hmm. What kind of house is this? Sort of a suburban ranch style house? Um, yeah, it's not a very big house. Let's see how they describe it in here. One story. Um, uh, it is a one story with a basement. Um, there are two bedrooms on this level, a kitchen, a living room. Uh, you've seen the living room and the kitchen. And then there's uh, stairs going down to a basement. Have we adjusted the heat yet? We've turned the heat down, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, the smell, you, you, you could try opening the windows or something to get the... It stinks, bench. right? It stinks like, like semen, and it stinks like something worse. Does it stink like decomposition? Yeah. Somewhere in the house. Do you want to follow your nose? Don't advise opening the windows then, because we don't want to attract the neighbors. Uh, unfortunately, I agree with Cavalier. Okay. When you pulled up, you didn't see any residents on either side. So, all right, let's get it over with. Let's. Who's going in the back bedroom? I'll go. Yep, let's go. Let's not split up. I go to draw my weapon and realize I'm not carrying one. All right. Uh, it doesn't take you long to figure out that um, one of the bedrooms uh, belongs to. Uh, Mrs. Mills, Skip's father, the uh, Skip's mother. Um, before you even open the door, you can smell the stench. Uh, you open up the door, and lying on the ground next to the bed is something almost undescribable. You assume that that's what's left of his mother. But it's, it's almost beyond your imagination to understand this. It's as if Mrs. Mills had been flayed open on the floor. There's goo everywhere. There's orangeness shit everywhere. Um, do you want to go in and do a closer examination? You can all do sanity, uh, or if you, unless you've got, uh, you know, uh, immunity to uh, be dead bodies. This Is would this have violent? to be, uh, d dead bodies. Yeah. Violence. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I do, I don't, but wouldn't I with my profession? Maybe not. I want to do the uh, I want to do the uh, decrease sanity trick. How does okay. that? Work? What by using your bonds and rolling a D four? How's that work? That that's when you actually lose sanity. Then you can use bonds to try to counter augment the loss. Mm -hmm. or exactly. Ameliorate, ameliorate the loss. Okay. So yeah, I'm not immune to violence. I don't think. All right. Does it? So I'm immediately thinking, um, don't go in yet. Listen. I passed this if in. That, yeah, if that okay. thing spawned additional anything, um, we'd best be on our on our guard. Okay. the The silence is eerie now that you turned off the the TV and the radio and all of those things. Um, but you don't see any movement. No skittering noises? No skittering noises. Um, there is damage to the room, though. There appear to be bloody handprints uh, here and there on the walls, and you notice that some of the roof panels have been damaged. Hmm. What do you mean roof panels? You mean like drop ceiling panels? Like, yeah, up up into the, uh, there's probably not an attic, but an attic space, uh, as if the, the drywall has been damaged. Not, not that I say panels, but, So can yeah. we see holes into the attic? Yes. Oh, that can't be good. <laughs> I 
looking at I need to get up to the attic looking at mrs i really wish i had a weapon right now sorry looking at mrs mills um most of her internal organs are gone it's like she's just a shell and her skin seems to have been desiccated uh while it was expanded so it's almost like like a cracked eggshell is her skin um and yeah there's there's blood and there's orange liquid here and there on the floor and there are these bloody handprints um you can do a spot hidden on the bloody handprints or or uh, what, i mean uh, an, an alertness an alertness that's a pass fail okay uh if you passed as you're looking at them you realize that they are not precisely human handprints they're very similar but there's anatomical differences are they bigger or smaller a little bigger and oddly it's almost as if the hand were twisted in a manner in a strange manner the distance between the index finger and the thumb is too wide the little okay. finger points out too far are they fi are there five digits uh there are five digits yes are you two thinking what i'm thinking and there are two of them no conclusions yet what are you thinking we pulled the other larval creature from the mouth of um mills so you think this is the result of a full gestation i think yeah that's a good way to put it i think this is um remnants of a hosting hmm. i don't know if whatever grew inside her this is wild speculation i don't know if whatever grew inside her is its own entity or it took on some sort of um, aspects of humanity i don't know i know i don't want to go into crawl space Oh. How big are the how big are the holes in the ceiling? Maybe about one and a half, two feet feet wide. I mean, enough as if a person was had punched their hole their way through and climbed up somehow. So there's there is a hole big enough for us to climb through, for example. Well, we could just go to the attic through normal means. I, I imagine. Yeah. Maybe maybe something a little smaller than what you are, but. I don't know how big you guys are. If we're going to be scoping out the crawl space, we need at least helmet, face mask, flashlight. Hell, flamethrower would be nice. But uh, <laughs> a couple of forty fives would be handy. Let's check. The, uh, are there any? Are there any closets or anything? Is there some? You know, some place where a, a creature of size could hide in this room. Well, there's a closet. Closet's closed. Are there any handprints, footprints leading to it? No, the 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 there there are only handprints, and the handprints seem to go from the uh, from the body uh, up to the bed, across uh, up the wall, and out the hole. Oh, jeez! You don't see any feet marks. Hmm. All right, I think we've got one on the loose. Like well, we gotta, we gotta check the uh, the attic. Let's be systematic here. Let's check that other bedroom first. Okay. In case it jumped down. Skip's uh, bedroom is full of pornography, just like most of the rest of the house. Oh, that's interesting, though. Was the, was the mother's bedroom void of it? Uh, yes. But the door was the door was closed, and the uh, um, there was some porn stuck up on the, the walls in the hallway.
But what his bedrooms? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, um, let's search it quick. I'm. I doubt we're going to find anything, but let's just give it a quick toss. Um, you you toss this bedroom, and you're seeing the paraphernalia of what you would consider a healthy American man, and a ton of pornography all over everything. Uh, it's you get more and more the impression that this guy was infected with this thing and that it was driving him and that he was trying to stop it by feeding it pornography, so to speak, to um, now his mother may not have been so lucky. Uh, obviously she wasn't. <laughs> well, we don't, I mean, I, I can only guess that Mills was facing a similar fate. Should we check the basement quick? Yeah, and then let's see if we can uh, lock down the the house, if not just the crawl space above us. Is there how, is there like some kind of little ceiling hatch or something? Yes. And where is that located? Is that it's in the hall. It's in on one end of the hallway. Yes. And is yeah. it just a hatch that you would need a step ladder to get up into, kind that's, of a thing? That's correct. Yeah. The kind that you would lift up and move over. Exactly. Yeah. Is there any kind of weapon in the house? We well, haven't searched the house. You there are there are knives in the kitchen. Oh, Anything that you'd find start. in a regular house. You'd that'll do for a start. I'll take a large kitchen knife. What do you mean? In a regular American house, you can find all kinds of weapons. Well, keep yeah. looking. I mean, you'll find stuff. <laughs> okay. I'll make it easy for you. When you go down into the basement, there's no big monsters waiting for you. <laughs> but there, there is stuff. There's. Um, I'll even give you a hand axe. Let's go into the basement, fellas. All right. Yeah. So down Amazon. there, you find you find old stored stuff, and you find junk like that. Most of it with cobwebs and stuff. But there's a there's a ladder, and there is a a, a big axe. I'll trade right. out the butch the chef's knife for the axe, and we can use the ladder to access the uh, the roof. Any flashlights? Um, sure. Yeah, there's flashlights. Yeah, let's make sure. Let's make use of those. And is there a gas connection to the house? Uh, yeah. There is a gas connection, yes. What about any other fuel or anything? Do they have any kerosene or gasoline? Or uh, There's a can of gasoline for uh, mow the lawnmower. Perfect. Nobody's using the lawnmower this time of year. Mm -hmm. Some dirty rags or old blankets or anything? Sure. Cool. We got the means to make an impressive fire if we need to. Yep. All right. So, what's your move? All right. We need to clear the attic. Okay. Okay. I'll go a point with a flashlight and the hand axe. Will I'll hold the ladder. Maybe... Yeah. Okay. And then, Doc, you want to carry the gas can? What? Do you... What's the gas can for? Back here. Soak some of these rags first. I don't know. Do you have just a way to light them? Some, in case some horrible monster that crawled out of her, your man's mother decides to uh, attack me, you know, we can set it on fire or something. I don't know. Actually, use here. This one's not soaked. I mean, I don't really uh, like wrap the it idea your, going up into wrap this. Wrap it around your face yeah. just in case. All right. I don't really like the idea going up in this attic. I saw the grudge. <laughs> yeah, well. I'll be ready to tackle you off the ladder. Yeah, you'll know I'm in trouble if I start screaming like a girl. Oh, noted. All right, let's do this. All right. All right. So you carefully set up the ladder. You don't want to make too much noise. You're kind of freaked out. Um, set up the ladder underneath the, the thing. You, you climb up the ladder and you put your hands carefully on the wooden panel and you very carefully push it upwards until you can see that it's cleared the uh, the braces to keep it in place. And then you move it a little over to the side. Or how do you want to do it? Do you uh, want to... Probably pushing it back. You push it back. And then your next move... 
shine the flashlight around in there. To peek, okay. peek my so head you in. stick your head up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, you stick your head up and you look around and you can see where the, the light is coming from the bedroom through the hole. Um, there's cobwebs everywhere, but there's an unusual amount of light coming from one end. And you can see that on the, the end of the, the house, uh, there was an exhaust fan that's been ripped out of the wall so that there is now a hole in the wall, uh, which is probably where it went because it's not up here. All right, get them up there to have a look. See Basically, it went out the back of the house. There you go. Well, shit. <clears throat> Are there any kind of footprints or anything up here? Um, do you want to go all the way up and look? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you go up yeah, there and look. As well. And yeah, you can see in the dust, there are no footprints, but there are handprints. Okay, again, handprints, no footprints. And that exhaust fan was torn out of the wall with a great yeah. deal of force. It wasn't like they didn't remove all the screws. No. It was like they grabbed a hold of it and literally just tore it out of the wall. Um, do, an, uh, do, a, do an alertness. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be a success. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Fail. Uh, you think that you might actually see bits of hair and skin uh, that got kind of ripped on the splinters of the wood as whatever it is went out the house. Um, skin. Yeah, kind of a grayish, bluish skin. It's not human skin. Hmm. Look at this duck. Yeah, can I look at it? I bring in your, bring in yeah. another flashlight. Give me some more light. Uh, what do you want? Um, biology. You no know biology. <laughs> It should be listed. Science, biology. Yeah, it would be science. I don't know. Medicine, medicine, and first aid. Okay, medicine. That'll work. Okay, that's a success. All right. You've you've never seen anything like it. It's it's almost like naked mole rat skin, but it's gray. It's like necrotic or no it's just that color hmm. it's quite loose like like fresh piece of skin um, um you don't see any red blood though you see maybe residues of orange okay i'm gonna wipe i'm gonna wipe it down with one of the gas soaked cloths okay so i've got all the the skin and hair off of the the thing Don't need okay. anyone getting uh, extra details on this. Okay. What next? Let's take the, let's take care of the house and then go hunting. What do you mean take care of the house? Well, we've got two bodies that really, really don't need to get autopsied, and a house that looks very, very weird on the inside. We have a gas connection. We have a, we have gas, gasoline. We can soak the bodies in gasoline to ensure their demise and rig the house to explode, incinerate. Why would we do that? cover the evidence that way two two fine upstanding members of the community simply die in a uh, a tragic gas leak instead of this there's I some sense to this plan. i almost wonder though if we just leave it i mean 
we don't want to draw attention to ourselves and we don't really want anybody to know that we're even here. Do you think that the, do you think that the, the, think the local authorities would be able to explain any of this? Or this would just be some kind of weird satanic cult activity or something, right? They're not going to put extraterrestrial together. We don't even know if it's extraterrestrial. Right, that's a guess on my part. I don't know. I, but there's there's nothing to suggest satanic cult either. I, it's just a it's just a common explanation for weird things. Hmm. I I'm in favor of uh, destroying evidence over planting it. It's much easier. What about what do you think, Cavalier? I agree. I think it's easier to destroy the evidence. Given the storm and everything, we're not going to be able to get anybody to contain this properly and you know, whisk it away and we're safe anytime soon anyway. So Delta Green can't make use of it. So the best thing we can do is to remove it from the potential public eye. Do we have to do anything with it immediately? In theory, no. I'm just thinking but... that the, the, and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but the outside story, a bunch of people came from FEMA. They came to the office. We gave them some offices. They asked a lot of questions about this Mills guy. Hmm. Three hours later, his house blows up. Yeah. yeah, we could put some, we could feasibly put some time in between our inquiry and the uh, the time, disposal. what's going on with the other half of the team? Oh, they're supposed to be securing the site. Mm -hmm. exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text. Yeah, who, uh, who texted me? I think it was Frost. I'm gonna text Frost back. I'm gonna text. Um, what am I gonna text? Situation fucked. Mills dead. Mother Mills dead. Your end? Question mark. You want me to uh, respond now, or do you want to uh, have a little time break between that? Oh, you're uh, asking Tom? me? Yeah. Can um, I respond no, respond, respond now. Yeah. Okay. You're, you've just, you know, gone through uh, the stack of uh, computer paper. Okay. Um, uh, found, uh, found 10 items, uh, started documenting one, extremely detailed surveillance on hands. At, I'm, I'm parts were it. added about a week ago and um, implies firsthand, uh, what is it, uh, experience uh, documenting hands, thousands of people. And second item is really detailed maps of a meatpacking plant in Chicago. What is it, uh, situation normal, we are we have secured the scene and we have removed evidence of the break-in. Video evidence exists of whomever broke containment. Well, that's a fair, that's a little bit, of, and I'm saying this to the two guys with me, that's a little bit of good news. If there's video yep. evidence. I mean, do, don't we think it's, I don't know. I'm thinking it's Mills for whatever reason. But. Right. I would, I would assume Mills. I would assume as well. I mean, you didn't get this from eating at Taco Bell. Oh, and I'll add a uh, single person uh, broke containment. What is it? Uh, we found uh, tracks of one person going in and coming out. Okay, what are the mission directives here? Find Mills, check. Secure the site and document items. Hey, maybe we should bring that shit over here. It is fucking cold here. <laughs> That's right, you have no heat. Yes. And the weather is continuing to snow and come down. Containment unit is literally broken. Please come get us. <laughs> We've got a lot of shit. Tell them we got a lot of shit. All right. 
gonna make use of that cargo area. <laughs> um, are there any are there any house keys that I can find? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all right. While we're deciding what to do with this location, let's make sure all the entrances, exits are locked. Uh, turn off all the lights. Let's make it look like no one's home. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll get on that. Just, I'm just wondering if we if we bring the stuff here, if this place is safe enough. Um, let's, let's, at, at this point, it's it's as safe as anywhere else in the town. We don't have we don't have a secured location. And we don't have right a now. whole. We don't have a lot of options. We've got the somebody secured a hotel room for us. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily got, secure. That's yeah. not any more yeah. secure than this place. Except, but it doesn't it, smell like semen. Right. It As doesn't you have can a body examine things at your leisure. We are we are blessed to you know be able to go nose blind, but there are limits. Yeah, fair. Let's we'll go get them. We got to get them. We got to pack the stuff up. We've got a big enough vehicle to put ten things in. Do we? We have to get them. Ideally. We have to get them. Yes. All right, fine. I don't. Well, unless there's a uh, cursed sofa or something, but we might so make sure this place is. Uh, Make sure this place is uh, locked down. Yeah, we didn't break in, right? So it, just from the no. outside, it does not look broken into. So let's just, yeah, let's just secure it and we'll talk you'd about it. Around, we yeah, you'd have to go around back to see the uh, the damaged grate air intake. That's the only external sign of shenanigans. You know, it's cold up with that hole in the attic. It's cold up there. And I'm saying this as we're driving. We could stick okay. the old lady's corpse up in there. Perhaps. I mean, we could we could also turn, like, just off the heat. Um, just on the, uh, at the, the thought of that, no, you probably couldn't, because you think if you tried to move her, she would crumble into horrible body parts that got it <laughs> there's not enough left of her it's really just a husk Need oh, a, a, a broom and a dustpan I was going to say you're worried about evidence mop, mop and a dustpan just take out the trash all right let's go get keys and forest yep all right so you drive over we should well I mean, if we're going to dispose of bodies that way, then we should, I don't know. We need to find out what that orange stuff is so we can neutralize it properly. Make sure it can't be identified by anyone but us. And we still have that larval husk in a pickle jar or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I will, um, I'll, look, I'll look through a phone book and see if there's any research labs, etc. We might be able to... Um, Voluntold their facilities for a while. Is there a community college or something? Yes, there is. Yeah, we can see what's up with that. Probably easier to break into. Um. Well, depends on if they're. I mean, their security system might be like the one on the uh, on the box. True. It might be better. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just have to keep our options open right now all right uh so you drive over back to the uh uh the storage unit um and the guys are pretty much ready for you uh they have a number of cardboard boxes and uh, uh the the heaviest thing is an oddly shaped object about two feet across uh, that is in a, a black plastic bag. Um, it feels odd. It feels like a big chunk of something. It's got the weight of wood um, and it uh, is that it a just, bag? 
it's it's in a bag. Well, they've taken a black plastic bag and wrapped it up in that. What, what is this? You don't know, are you? No, they haven't wrapped it up. It was already wrapped up. Oh, oh I'm sorry. We haven't they had haven't. time to go through all of it. I right. just read about uh, ten thousand different hands, and I looked at some uh, maps. Hands. detail. All right. Mm-hmm. We do need a computer, though. We need to get to a computer as soon as. Are there any names you right. recognize? Um, what is it? I will uh, give him the pile and say, uh, l- "Look up yourself." All right. Is and there? Is there a Richard Todd? Uh, There is not. Do you look up your real name? Yeah. Yep, it's there. With a perfectly described set of hands. Both hands hands. or one hand? Both hands. But it does say which handed you are. And what kind of gloves you prefer when you wear them. And any kind of odd cuts or odd things on it but you're you're still in the car so yeah you can't Weird. really look through a four foot high stack right of, right, right. Of uh, while they were while they were loading up uh the the stuff uh-huh. uh, i would recommend to uh cavalier and warthog that we try and use some snow to wipe off or wash off some of the uh offending excrement of us Mm-hmm. I mean, we can get cleaned up back at the uh, hotel room here, guys. Uh, we're gonna we get don't want to linger. Very strange. Yeah, we we don't, but we're gonna get very strange looks. We Just are. We can mitigate yeah. some of this issue. We are literally robbing a storage facility. Can we please not hang around? Um, to clarify some of the stuff you said, the hotel is not running. The hotel has been appropriated. Yeah. So the only people that are in there will be other crew members that might be on break. It's very likely you'll walk in, nobody will see anything that you're doing, and you'll just they'll just think you're a cleanup crew for something, or okay, they won't pay any attention. Well, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's go. Hey, Forrest, and our tracks are covered. I covered up me getting the the footage. Keys was very thorough. Uh, snow's falling to cover up any actual tracks. Exactly. Yep. We'll be fine. All right. You oh, get back. Shit. Snow's falling. We won't be able to track the uh, the thing. Say what now? <laughs> what? What? We bring them up to speed. I don't think there's anything we need to hide, is there? I don't have anything. That no, I need to... we're. Oh, do you do you have for, the for uh, operational efficiency? You have a specimen. Yep. Yes, we do. Oh, may I see it? You're still in the car. Yeah. <laughs> it's in let's, between those boxes. Yeah, okay. let's uh, just keep it out of sight. We we we'll wait. Just wait. We'll get to the hotel. We guys can get cleaned up. Okay. I need to get to a computer and all that jazz. All right. So to cover computers. We know there's a computer in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Hotels like have computers. Hotels literally across the street from where the trailer yeah. is. We can oh, use man. the we can use the uh, nastified computer from that trailer. It is our okay. office space. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let yeah. Okay. Let's let's go to the hotel. Store all of the stuff in the hotel. Yeah. 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 All right. So it takes you what forty five minutes or so to get there. To uh, to take all of the stuff up to your third third floor room, um, and what do you want to do, Alex? What do you want to do first? Well, I will I will obviously make sure everything's dropped off, but I will get the recording that I took, oh, yeah. and I'll and I'll bring one of the maps as well with the writing on. Or maybe how many maps were there? It was like there were fourteen. They're can, in. Can, they're in yeah. separate files yeah, sure. inside of overlays. Yeah, I can. I'll bring that along, and I'll go to the uh, 
All right. A caravan thing that we're working out. So let's do it like this. Um, it's, it's kind of uh, obvious that what you would do is, is you would probably each be looking at something different. You wouldn't necessarily all be focusing, but let's, for the sake of ease, uh, let's handle one object at a time. And since everybody else is in the room until Alex gets back, um, you could say, you know, hey, Cavalier, come here, take a look at this. Or, hey, you know, come over and look at this. So who wants to go first? What we'll do is we'll, we'll have you choose between uh, one and eight. And then you can decide whether you want to go to the next number up or the next number down. And we'll start working our way through the objects. And there are 10 objects. Right. And we've looked at two, which is the valets and the uh, stack of computer paper. Is it, uh, I've been waiting for two weeks for this, so uh, I'll go first. <laughs> okay. Number Seven. between one and eight. Seven. All right. There is what looks like a old fashioned suitcase, um, uh, almost shaped like, I don't know how to describe it. The sides are perpendicular, but the top is leather and it sort of comes like that. There's a handle on the top. Oh, like a doctor's bag? Like, like a doctor's bag, but much bigger. Uh, like something you'd carry all of your stuff in, like a, um, a carpet bag. Okay. Okay. Um, you go to the carpet bag and you know that there's something odd and bulky inside of it. You open up the bag and inside there is a wooden roundish object with a hatchet buried in it, jammed into it. Um, do you pull it out? Uh, I'm not pulling the hatchet out of the object, but I'm going to pull them both out together to get a better look. All right. This is what you see. Oh, my. It's a strange, badly carved wooden head with a hatchet buried in it. Hmm. A strangely painted face and some black residue and fingerprints on can the I try to, hatchet. Can I tr try to identify the black residue? Sure. Well, uh, what is it? Uh, before he does that, uh, can I look around um, the object itself, just kind of like turn it about, see if there's any kind of maker mark on the statue? Um, sure. Do a luck roll. Woohoo. That's a fail. Okay. Um, you start looking around it to see if there is a mark. Uh, you don't see any kind of marking on it that would indicate who it was made by. Um, the more you look at it, the more it almost looks like it wasn't carved, but it somehow grew that way. And because you failed your luck, the hatchet falls out onto the floor. Huh. Okay. I was trying to avoid that, but... And it's about the size of a human head. Oh. What is it? Uh, I'll uh, I'll try and wedge it back in in the same position it was. Okay. Uh, not chopping, not doing any more damage, but just kind of putting it back like I found it. Okay. Hmm. Um. Corey, bring over your hand axe. Give it, a, give it a light tap just to make sure it's in. Yeah. But is it... Uh... Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, identifying the black residue. It looks like it's old. It's, it's a stain that's on the, on the axe handle itself. Um, you're not sure how long the stain has been there, 
but it's penetrated into the wood. You can't really rub it off. Like a, um, like a wood stain? Yeah, like or something, something, something oily enough that it actually went okay. into the wood. You'd have to sand it off. And even then it might have penetrated quite a bit into it. Other than that, it seems to be a normal axe handle. And the head, the, the more you look at it, the weirder. Uh, you, you, it looked like it was badly carved, but it actually looks like it grew that way. And you can do a sanity roll. Any of you that examine it. And if you lose, you'll just take one point of damage. Okay. Hmm. Pass. All right. Just, just zero. Zero points of damage. Cool. It's just weird. Hmm. Hmm. Well, nothing malignant so far. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, what is it? Uh, nothing apparently harmful. I'll put that yeah. one back in the carpet bag. Okay. And make sure that it's uh, ready to move in case we have to, in a hurry. Okay. That's my item. What are you guys doing? Um, you can choose another number, or you could say, you know, eight or six. You can move up or down the list. Or what number are we on? Seven? He, he did seven. All right, I'll go for eight. All right, eight. Eight, you're intrigued by that big... Uh, black plastic bag uh, of the unusually shaped object. Um, you open it up and at first, it, 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 this is almost the size of a, a small footstool. It's, it's fairly big. It's made out of wood. It seems to have some intricate design to it, uh, but it's oddly shaped. It's like a box? It's a what now? No, it's just, just D10. Just like a big chunk of wood. Well, <laughs> you say that, but when you start to look at it, you realize there's only nine sides. Is that possible? Is it? Yeah. I, it, I, I was curious about that, too, I guess. About I that. mean, with that design, though, with those, that shape. It's got nine sides. <laughs> Is it heavy? Um, I mean, he didn't say that all the faces are regularly sized, so I mean... Do you... Do you try and pick it up? Well, you did already pick it up, yeah? Yeah. Um, pick it up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not tremendously heavy. It's it's it heavy like, like you would expect for wood. Well, there's the thing. When you pick it up, you can tell there's something inside of it. Rattling around? Something. It's not really rattling around. It's like there's something does it uh, have, fairly large and loose in there. Does it have any hinges or anything? Does it look like it opens anywhere? Do a... Uh, 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 do an alertness roll. Success. Right. Um, you start. You you start realizing that there is definitely uh, a reason why each pattern is the way that it is, and it takes you a few minutes to figure it out. But it's it's, it's kind box. of a puzzle box. Yeah. And uh, you realize what you're supposed to do. You you push the appropriate panels. And the box sort of unfolds like it was all hinged on the inside. And there is another box inside of it. Um, different, but also nine-sided. Like one of those Russian doll things, what it's called. Mm -hmm. This all one's right. a little more intricate, it looks like. It has the same kind of patterns on it, though? Or what are, like... It has different patterns on it. But the first but one was it look kind like it of... works in the same way? The first one seemed to look like it used a uh, mathematical formula that you'd follow to figure it out. This one also looks like that, but a more complicated mathematical formula. I see. Like Rubik's Cubes with uh, more sides on them. Do you want me to make a roll to try to figure it out? Sure, do an intelligence roll. Pass, 48 under 60. Okay. No, oh, well, I mean... I assume it's five times intelligence, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I just realized my intelligence is 12, not 60. But... 
Well, twelve is sixty. Okay. What did you What did you roll? Forty eight. Yeah, that's a pass. Mm-hmm. Well, this time it takes you half an hour or so um, to figure it out to work your way through the pattern. But once you do, it also pops open, sort of unfolds like a flower, and inside is another box. This time, more complicated still, but getting oh. progressively smaller. As I'm they totally go. obsessed with it at this point. <laughs> All right. So you want to set over to the side? Yeah. All Just right. Keep working away at it. All right. Let's jump for a moment over to Alex. Alex, you go into the uh, the office, and uh, you begin to do some research. Uh, it takes you a while. We'll say it actually takes you uh, the good part of, let's say, two hours uh, because it's difficult. Um, what you find is that this Mr. A- Abner Leibowitz uh, was the cartographer uh, for the city of Chicago and that his basic task was that he would um, he would each year he would redraw the maps for the sake of um, you know political climate or uh, how the the city was going to rezone things and the first couple of years everything seems normal but then he became obsessed with this place the Chambly meat packing and as he went on each year he became more and more obsessed with it. And it seems from his notes and from these maps that although, as you can see in the postcard from the top of this building, you can see it over there, this red building, um, he could not find it when he was searching for it in the actual location. Um, All of his little maps show every route, every possible route that he took to try and locate this building in reality, and he couldn't find it. Uh, He marked maps where it should be, but nothing. And uh, year after year, he became more obsessed with it. And then in 19... Uh, 23 he was fired and he was fired because uh, he was neglecting his regular job and he'd become unstable and so they let him go Uh, in 1924 the year that followed he was suspected of robbery uh, because the city archives had been broken into and certain survey maps and things were stolen. They, they thought that he did it. Uh, what the? This is some crazy shit. And finally, if you use Google, uh, Google Translate to try to figure out the Hebrew, which takes you the longest because you have to figure out how to type it in Hebrew, um, the, the one, the, the tiny message was, uh, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. And then the final message, the bigger message that he scribbled out on a piece of scrap paper is the cattle tunnels. Now I have them. And that was the last time he was ever seen. Holy shit. When you check the city records, there is no record at all of any place called Chablis Chablis Meatpacking. What the fuck, man? You can do a sanity roll. Getting no all freaked out. No wonder this guy got a bit crazy. I'm even talking to myself here. Jesus Christ. There is a knock on the trailer door. Uh, that's a fail as well. You lose one sanity. Okay. Uh, I I go. I I kind of jump, I get a bit startled by it, and then I go and open the door okay not all the way just you you open the door and there is a policeman standing there and he's like ah um hi uh hi 
Uh, my name is Deputy Eli Filigree, and he shows you his badge. Uh, he says, uh, are, you're with FEMA? Uh, yeah, I'm Alex Webb. Okay, I was trying to find uh, some information. Um, I was told that you were, that the, uh, uh, the, the, the department had been moved out here because of the, the, the damage to the building and the weather. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get some information on the electrical grid uh, for a certain part of town uh, okay. to see if, uh, uh, to see which houses are still occupied and which ones aren't. Uh, are you the person to talk to? Well, there's, um, there's been a murder and I, uh, I'm, I'm looking into it. A murder? Um, well, there was a, it's kind of weird. There was a homeless fellow uh, that we found on the street uh, in a ATM box. Uh, he'd been uh, obviously attacked, but um, I, I had my suspicions that uh, he's not a homeless person. Uh, the, um, uh, well, how, how do I explain this? Uh, I mean, there's reasons to believe that, that this is not right. I, I tried to, I, I'm, I'm just a, a deputy, but uh, I'm trying to solve the case, you know, to get, get a better promotion and stuff like yeah, that. But I, did, I didn't catch your name, deputy. Uh, Elias Filigree, deputy. Oh, okay. And uh, I mean, there's just some weird things about the case. I, I tried to, to talk to my... Uh, my superiors, but they said, considering the, the the recent disaster, that there are far more important things than looking into the uh, the death of a what they perceive as a homeless person. Okay, well, I can't I can't help you with the electrical grid because I'm trying to get into it myself. I've got to wait for clearance from. Oh, I see. Um, I'm just I'm kind of figuring the the reason why I wanted to see if I could find which houses were still occupied as I'm wondering if he came from one of those, okay. you know, and um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm probably bothering you. You're probably not really oh, no. interested at all. No, that's, that's fine. Um, if, if you want, I can uh, keep you updated if I get into the grid finally, and I can relay some information to you. Okay. I'll, well, uh, I'll I kind of get up from working on the puzzle box and walk over and say, "Yes, of course, Deputy Filigree. We'll let you know as soon as we get access to the grid." Okay, he's not. he's across the street at the oh he is at the trailer. Yeah, is, I'm not. I'm sorry, I got yeah. lost. That's okay. I'll just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was, he's I was lost in a puzzle. This puzzle's really, really messing with my brain. <laughs> um, so, um, he says, "Well." I mean, I'm working on this in my free time because, I mean, technically, like I say, the, the police department doesn't really want to bother uh, wasting time. I'm just hoping that I can, you know, solve it. This guy's fairly young. He's like 26. Yeah. Well, 24, that's, 26. That sound, it sounds like an interesting case. Well, if I can help you. I mean, the, anyway, the, 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 the whole thing was so weird, you know. Um, but... Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, maybe I'll check back in later and see have, if you've got the. Have you got a personal contact detail so I can contact you? Well, yeah. I mean, sure. Here's I don't know if policemen have cards. Um, here's my badge number. Okay. <laughs> um, here I'll write down my phone number. Yeah. Uh, you can get get a hold of me with dispatch. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you know. Um, wait, did you say there was something weird about it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it would be easier to show you if if you're really that interested. I could you know take you down to the morgue, but uh, I mean, I don't want to bother you. You obviously have a lot of work to do with this with this stuff. Well, I see what I can do about the grid and get that, and then maybe I can see if I can help you out. You seem determined for this, so. All right, I'll be around. Just try to get a hold of me. Okay, I will. Um... Thank you. Yeah. See you around, deputy. He walks out, gets into his police car, and drives away. Yeah, I sh I shut the door. I'm like, oh, what a determined man, and uh, I want to check the footage. So, 
I'm sorry, you want to check for what? The footage from oh, the okay. drive. Yeah, that's my next. All right. Go on. Um, you go through the footage, and all, all of what you're saying, you, you see the point early on when the building, when the tree falls down and the building gets damaged. Um, okay. uh, you can see that it's snowing pretty heavily, and it's quite a bit after that. Um, uh, but it looks like maybe about one o'clock in the morning that uh, Skip shows up. And you're, I mean, you're 99% sure that it's Skip because he's all bundled up. Okay. And you see Skip uh, climb over the tree and go into the, the building. And then you wait, and you wait, and you wait. And it takes oh, about a half an hour. And after a half an hour, you suddenly see Skip sort of stagger back uh, to the tree trunk, lean on the tree trunk and vomit all over the ground, which is where you saw the vomit on the ground. And then he climbs back over the tree and he, he's, he's staggering like he's like something bad has happened to him. Okay. Uh, and he staggers out of frame. Fuck, that and that's, a, that's all you see. I guess it's a time of a, a possible instant with Skip first coming in contact, at least. But fuck. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll write the, uh, write all my notes that I found, and then I will put every every bit of evidence back where it is, and then go back up to the hotel. All right. So after a bit. Um, Alex rejoins you. Agent Keys rejoins you upstairs. Hey, Keys. Hello. Uh, I found out quite a bit, actually. Uh, um, me, not so much. What'd you get? Well, uh, this is going to sound a bit weird, but I'll get into the bits that's actually relevant to uh, our friend Skip in a minute, but the item, the uh, the maps. So this guy, uh, Abner Leibowitz, he was looking into him. And he got really, because he was the planner, so he would update it when certain things changed, replanning, bad area, and all that jazz. And he was getting obsessed with this meatpacking plant, mm -hmm. but it wasn't showing up. It wasn't, it didn't seem to exist. It was there on the plans, and he saw it, but he, when he was actually looking... It was in the it, photographs, but it wasn't yeah. in the... Oh, it was in the photographs, but it wasn't in the plans. Photograph or anywhere. illustration? It was, it was a, a photograph, photograph from a building nearby looking at that area. That Oh, yeah, the postcard. The postcard. And in uh, 1923, he got fired because he was neglecting his work because he it got to him. He kept trying to figure out where this meatpacking plant was. Mm. And then... Apparently in 924, it was the city archives was robbed for some of the uh, planning information and stuff like that. And I looked up this, uh, the, his little doodles, and one of them said, where is it? Which is understandable if uh, he's looking for something. And then the other one, it kind of got me. It says, the cattle tunnels, now I have it. And then oh, he yeah. disappeared. What is it? Uh... They're, I'm vaguely familiar with. Uh, they used to have uh, tunnels uh, beneath the city because they didn't want uh, what is it uh, livestock going through town and uh, disrupting traffic that would go right from like the loading docks from where they would come in from the train station. Shit. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. kind of a death march if you're a bovine, but uh, what is it uh, efficient? Maybe you went uh, down there and. Maybe found a way down there, and well, he was never seen again, according to what I researched. And well, yeah. But <clears throat> are we getting get a little off track the, here? Yeah, sorry, yeah. The, Is this connected? Keys. No, and... no, no, no. I just thought out. I I found it interesting. I wanted to share, but I'll get to the relevant. What is it? Uh, priority number two is documenting the abnormal objects in the green box. He is. Uh, what is it exactly on track here, fellas? 
So hey, I'll, I'll get to the nitty. So when I checked the um, footage that I found at 1 a.m., Skip shows up. He goes in. And then half an hour later, he comes back by the tree looking a bit uh, staggered and he froze up. So we have a time of when he possibly got caught up in this mess, at least. So there's like a half hour gestation period for this thing then. Well, wait. Seems to be. But that was initial contact. Can we, can you cross reference the time that that happened with when we started noticing this aberrant behavior with his web searches? Well, I guess we could easily do that by. Uh, yeah. All right, so the way that would have worked is one o'clock, uh, we'll say that he got infected because we see him throw up and everything. He gets in his car and he drives home. Next day, he comes to work. He's ill and he leaves at half day. He calls the pornography store. He picks up a whole bunch of pornography and he secludes himself in his house. That next day. Right. So at least we Well, have it's a actually timeline. the same day because it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> at, at least we have a timeline of the events of Skip. But there's something more interesting. Uh, Deputy Elias Fil Filgri, he's working off of books, but he came by the trailer. And he asked to see the grid because um, he's investigating this death with this homeless man by an ATM, but he doesn't think he's homeless. He thinks he came from one of the houses. And he did offer that I could go look at the body. Wait, dead by ATM? What? No, no, no. He was found dead by the by an ATM box. Uh oh. Sorry, I should have been more clear. Sorry. Uh how far is it from that uh critter that uh what is it you guys lost? Do we know where the ATM is? Did you get an address? No. But he did offer for me to see the body. So that's interesting. Hmm. What is it? Uh, if we can get, you said he was uh, after information about the electric grid. If we could get, uh, what is it, uh, onto their system, what is it? Uh, we would have something to trade for him, and that way we can organically ask what area he needs to look at. Exactly. He's, he seems quite determined to get to the bottom of his case. But the problem is I tried getting into the grid myself, but I sadly couldn't. So we got to wait for the actual clearance and that could take a couple of days. If he, to the, offered, uh, if he already offered to show you the body, he might offer a lot more information too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He, he I seems that like he, he'll do anything I could potentially, to get I could potentially go and ask him. I could see, I could see the body and also, uh, review any sort of medical supplies they might have stockpiled there, you know, for yeah. FEMA purposes. But is it, uh, I'll throw it out there that uh, I've been kind of anchoring to look at this sample and those two bodies. I don't have a medical background, but I've got a biology background. And uh, especially if this is uh, non-human, that's more my uh, ball of wax here. Good. Because I'm, uh, I'm strictly, I'm strictly human. How's the documenting coming along? Slow. Slow. What is well, it, we don't uh, want to bum rush in willy nilly and get, you know, well, and turn into it? another Mills situation. That's well, true. the thing is, we don't have a lead on this thing out in the wild. Otherwise, that would probably be our highest priority. So. Some people should stay here and keep documenting these anomalous objects. And uh, right. some people should probably go and uh, examine one or all of the biological specimens we have. Well, as the deputy has met me, I think I should definitely go. When... So he at least knows one of us. He's met one mm -hmm. of us, so it makes sense yep. for me to go. Uh, Doc, could you uh, provide your medical expertise in uh, that area? Certainly. But I, I am a little leery on uh, leaving a, a, a reduced number of us to categorize things um, in case in case something pops out of that bag over there and decides... <laughs> 
that uh, Cavalier's face looks tasty. It's like cowing down on us one by one. Yeah, I understand. Well, yeah. what is it? Uh, we're we're at a little bit of a time crunch here, and we don't uh, have the manpower to be in an ideal situation, though. I, True. I will just bring one thing. The deputy, he seems very determined to get at the bottom, so even, even if we spin some lies, maybe we can use him to our advantage. Perhaps. He seems resourceful. From a brief conversation I had. If I, him. you know, if the, if the body in the morgue that he's got is anything like the, um, others, then yeah. that gives us a substantial amount of information as well. Exactly. Well, do you want me to set up a meeting with him? I if I bring him. <clears throat> uh, let's him. let's take care. Let's. Uh, I'll go with I'll go with uh, Forrest, and we'll go to the house and look at the bodies there. Okay, and then when you come back, uh, I'll help you continue categorizing. Mm -hmm. When you come back, I'll then set up a meeting with the. That should work. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Wait, so okay. run the plan. You're going to go back to the house we were at with Forrest, so that he can look at those bodies. Mm -hmm. Are you two at the same time going to break into the local community college so you can take the sample and look at it? We can we can scope out what our options are there. We will acquire material. Don't worry. Remember, we're only a text away if you need backup. Understood. Yep. We have one vehicle, right? Currently. Yeah. <laughs> Currently. Is there a sporting goods store? I'm sure there is. Uh, would Stop you like by. us to pick we, you up something? We yeah. might also be able to procure Mills's vehicle, provided we keep it hidden. I was going to say, is probably not a good idea. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea at all. But um, no, just just pick up a, a couple of shotguns and some ammunition. Hmm. Okay, they, they shouldn't need to be registered or anything. You just buy them over the counter. Uh, if we can find anybody actually selling anything in this mess, uh, I'll be surprised. Uh, we may have to do a, a little bit of a five-finger discount here. That's even better. Mm -hmm. Well, provided the cameras aren't working. What is it? Uh, that's pretty easily assessed uh, based on whether or not it's got lights on or not. But uh, what is it? Uh, we need to get a move on here. Yep. Yeah, I... I as much as I want a gun, I might hold off on going and buying them. And, you know, again, it's this weird thing where these FEMA guys show up to town in the middle of an emergency. Oh, we're not going to buy them. Don't worry. And then they get caught shoplifting shotguns. <laughs> what is Valid it? Uh, if, if the opportunity presents itself, we shall avail ourselves. Otherwise, we are just going to uh, continue on. This is in the middle of a uh, national emergency here, and half the town uh, can't leave their homes. I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. Well, and the other half already left. Yep. What is it? Uh, I'll grab the keys and say, Doc, you want to drive or you want me to? I can drive. That'll be fine. All right. Toss you the keys. Let's get in the car. All right. So the three of you are going to head out. Uh, which leaves uh, uh, Warthog and Cavalier. Cavalier is continuing I, to work. I'm staying with Cavalier. Oh, you are? I'm okay. with him still. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cavalier is continuing to work on the puzzle box. He has solved another level. Um, so what is that? Four? Four levels you've solved? Three, I think. Three? Three you've solved. All right. This fourth level is proving itself to be rather difficult. Um, as you're going through it, but you continue to work on it. All right. um, it's it's a clever puzzle. Um, the wood of it feels very nice, polished, but it feels old. You know, not ancient, but old, like two hundred years old or so. You know, good piece of well constructed wooden something. Kept ten heads aside. <laughs> um, so, Richard, have you picked an object yet? No. Um, 
what's the if I look at the pile of these things, what stands out? Well, that's what we're doing. Pick a pick a number. Just pick a number. That'll be one through six. Uh, six. All right, we're working our way down. Uh, six. Um, uh, it's it's an object that's in a a, 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 a cardboard box. Um, it's a little wooden stand with a cylinder uh, made of metal uh, that seems to be uh, uh, etched all over or carved all over. And uh, when you look at it closely, uh, it seems to have a comic strip etched into it. Uh, it's obviously in reverse because it's meant to be printed and it's all in French. Do I notice this? I speak French. Well, yeah, you're watching Cause I, him. Cause I speak French as well. <laughs> I, speak, I speak French. What's it say? What's the comic book? Um, do an intelligence roll. Can I do one as well? Because sure. I speak not going to make it. Uh, 26. My intelligence is 75. So. Okay. Um, well, you, you can read it. Uh, it's in French. It's funny. Um, but Alex recognizes it as uh, a very renowned comic artist, uh, uh, Rodolphe uh, Toffer. Um, and uh, you've probably seen some of his work. Of course, this was maybe 50 years ago that he was popular. And um, it doesn't weigh that much. It's made out of metal, but it's not that heavy. Um, what do you do? This seems odd to be categorized here. Who knows? Uh, what kind of a comic is it? Is it like a Sunday comic? Is it like a... Well, it's, it's a kind of um, satire, uh, maybe of French, you know, gov po political satire. Um, are you going to try to read through it or I mean the easiest thing to do is to cover it in ink and roll it on something do you have but ink? we don't have any ink I don't have any ink <laughs> and I don't think it's connected to the case I would say open that thing over there oh. well we still need to well, well the we'll case is cat cataloging yeah <laughs> yeah well we'll just catalog it down as and we can look at it in more depth later we'll just catalog it down as what it is yeah because some kind of gotta be a print cylinder there's got to be a reason it's here because everything else here seems weird and there's got to be something more about this so we should because we got to be uh to the point with hey. these categorizations hey what if you rolled it in like some really packed snow would that be like printing it in the snow? I don't know. Maybe we could I, try I it. There is snow outside. What else do we have? We're in a hotel room. <clears throat> I don't know. I have this goddamn fucking puzzle box that every time I've solved it, there's another box inside it. It's driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> do you need a hand? Um, I don't know. Do I? Uh, I, I I want you to figure it out or I, I, I do an intelligence roll. Wait a minute, though, but it's in reverse. If I hold it up to a mirror, is there it you easy go. to read? Yes. Then I'm just going to hold it up okay. to a mirror. If you can read French. It, it the top, yeah. And I read French and I just sort of slowly spin it. And it's funny and it's an amusing sort of thing. And you spin it. And you read the next panel, and you spin it, and you read the next panel, and it continues, and it's an interesting story, and it's funny, and you continue to spin it, and the next panel, and you spin it, and you spin it, and you spin it, and you never get to the end of the story. It keeps going. It keeps going? So it's, going it's going farther than the... You're but literally I can, doing I this. stop reading it and look at it, right? Correct. And it's a, it's a three-dimensional contained object. Correct. And then when I go up and read the mirror, it's just all there. Right. 
but whatever if you if you look down at the stuff that's in front of you yeah on, on the actual thing it's yeah. changed oh that's weird as you turn it the story continues to change what sanity rules from both what of you fuck is it right i knew something was oh my fucking god yeah uh, that's a fail no wait Pass, no, I that is a fail that is a fail uh you failed how yeah, about I you failed. richard did you fail uh, no, I passed. Uh, passed. Uh, Richard, you take one. Uh, Alex, you take one d six. One. I... Okay. Uh, you take one point. Yeah, okay. Just... You're lucky, but <laughs> I'm very fucking lucky. Too. But you can't remember the story. Uh, fuck. Neither one of us. No, you can. You can, Richard, but <laughs> Alex, you can't. And you have a strong compulsion to pick the damn thing up and say, now, what was that story again? And uh, take a look at it and start I rotating it. I want to read um, it again, man. <laughs> We're not going to read it again. We're just going to put it away. No, but We're just going to catalog it. How's that puzzle box coming? Um, I can't remember. I, I rolled a uh, success, Tom. I rolled a you got another success? Yeah. Yep. All right. This time, though, it's taken you almost an hour to solve the the box. Uh, you solve the fourth level and uh, open it up, and there is another box, smaller God again. Damn it! Smaller and more complex. There's a hatchet boxes. over here. That'll help. How big now, is it now at this stage? Um, you know, about like this. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? I never watched Hellraiser either, so you have you have understood that there is a pattern to the patterns um much of it has to do with the number nine okay that's not that's number nine uh, iterations of number nine so forth um okay i'd like you also to do an intelligence roll that one i failed okay um to nothing. You don't have to worry about it. Um, <laughs> all right. Do uh, you guys want to move on to the next object? Uh, yes, even all though right. I really want to read that comic strip. Again. <laughs> One of the bulkiest uh, bits and pieces in here was a collection. Uh, it was a collection of objects that were on the back wall of the, uh, the, the storage chamber. Um, there are two uh, alabaster busts, uh, one of a man and one of a woman. Uh, they have uh, very pleasant and young faces. Along with those, there are paintings, photographs, bas reliefs, um, all gathered together in, in a box uh, next to those these things or they were next to them when you look at the pictures the paintings uh it's obviously the same two people um you then find portraits of families uh the portraits of families show a husband and a wife and multiple children most of the children are twins and the girls look like the mom and the boys look like the father. Do any of you have history or art? Yes. I have history, yeah. I have Why history for those. Oh, nope. one. No, nope. I, I failed. Well, Richard, you are, you are easily able to lay these out in your best estimate chronologically. Uh, you would say that the busts are ancient Roman, uh, that the paintings come from various periods in the Renaissance and, and so forth. And then the photographs begin, and you can see these are early daguerreotypes, these are like this, and they move on. Uh, in each case, 
And some of them have dates written on the backs of them. Uh, you begin to notice something even weirder, and that's that it's always these same two people, whether it's twins or, or, or whatever. The children look like the same children. The parents look like the same parents. And sometimes now that you're looking at photographs, some of them could not be the same people, even though they are. In one case, you've got a family in South Africa uh, in May of 1939, uh, like a family reunion. They all look the same. And the other one is in Louisiana um, just a day later of another family reunion, and they all look the same too. They all look the same in the picture or they all look the same between pictures? They all look the same. All of the males look the same. All of the children look like the father's or the mother's. Well, if there's a picture of like eight adult males, they all look the same? Exactly, but different ages, but obviously the same face. And the final two things you find are FBI, uh, two FBI badges, and it's the same people. Are these current? They're, they're, they're physical badges. Are these current badges? Well, they couldn't be current because they're in the, they were in the uh, box, at least pre-9-11. Pre, uh, pre what the fuck? The names are Al Albus, uh, Albus Juno and Cassia Juno. It's, it's, this is like historical evidence of the same two people forever or something. This is... Hey, I have a weird idea. Let's cross-reference these names with the hand list. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? For okay. Gifts, why not? Um, do well. You look through. It's it's alphabetical. You look through it. Um, there is no listing for either one of them in the hand list. Okay. Keys, have you gone through this to see if your name is in it? Uh, I can have a look. Why not? Here, I'll turn away because I don't want to know your real name. Okay. It is. Oh, in perfect detail. Uh, you, can do a one you can do a I, As soon as I notice you starting looking at your hand, I figure your name's in there. So is it even? So even the burn, let's say I got a burn like two weeks ago. Is that like lit? Yeah, it's yeah. listed. Oh wait a minute, then if if this is that up to date, wasn't this put in there pre nine eleven too? Yeah, I uh, I passed. I passed that. Sounding wrong. Um. Do a um. Well, I forget. Do either one of you have any uh Federal Bureau of Investigation in your background? In your real background. No. Nope. Okay. I'm a police officer in Chicago. Right. Okay. All right. So that's another weird one. Uh, oh, man. Of course, you do have a computer across, across the street still. We've gone through six of these 10 items. Yep. What number was that? Uh, was that five? The busts? That was five. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see. Um, I'll just do the next one on the list. Um, there is a violin case that's latched closed. Okay. I will. I will un. I will un. I'm gonna stupidly unlatch it because everything's been weird. Cover my so mouth. Far, so. No. All right. I probably put like sewing up covering. Okay, it's just oh, is it? There is an old, worn violin and a bow, and the inside of the case is red velvet. I am just gonna observe. I'm kind of just gonna skim my gloved finger along the violin, see if there's anything odd about. The what part of the violin covering. are you touching? 
Uh, the 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 body of the violin. Uh. Feels like wood. Okay. Uh, then I, then I'll just work up to the neck and then work up the neck. And this then... is sounding really dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the thing out of there. Um, I, don't, I don't know the name of the actual fuck. Uh, it's it's wood. It's all wood. Uh, then I. Then I examine the uh, bow. That's what it's called, isn't it? Okay, it's it's worn and it's it's it probably could use a new. Uh, I don't know what they're called, rosin or strings or whatever it is. Uh, although they're they're still in playable condition. This is gonna sound fucking. Oh, I don't want to do it, but I'm gonna pick it up and I'm just gonna test its weight in my hand. Very light. Just as I'd expect from a violin. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Todd, I... I don't want to, but maybe... I want to. I kind of want to see if it's in tune. It's, but there's, there's got to be something weird about it, so... How would you know? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I don't, I don't think... I don't have anything musically background-ish, but... No, I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna put it back in the case and wait, wait, but look it. at look at just inspect it. I and mean, I will too. While he's while Keys is looking at the violin, I wanna look at the case. See if it's if there's parts that come out, movable parts. Um yes and no. I mean there are the accoutrements of what a violin player would have in there. Um uh, and if there are parts that can be moved or taken out, they, they can be. Um, seems to be a regular normal case with the red velvet interior. Is there, if I look, is there any inscriptions? If I look around, any, That's any like marking who it owned it? Uh, any marks, anything like that? Uh, there are not. There are no, okay. you can see that there may have been a place where there had once been a label, but the label has since fallen off or worn. Okay. Just, run, just run the bow across it. Well, I was thinking before I run the bow across it, I'm just going to use my fingers on the string first and then I'll try the bow. Does it sound, if I just use my fingers on the violin? Just okay, you're going to you're gonna pluck the string? Yeah, with my fingers, which is... Absolutely no sound whatsoever. No, no sound at all. Nothing. It's as uh, if I've, somebody turned the volume off. But there are no sounds. Well, you can hear Cavalier mumbling under his breath with the puzzle and mm -hmm. we, whatever the heat going. All the I'm other sounds are still there. Correct. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna use I'm the bow. Cursing here. under my breath. Cursing under my breath. Yes. I, I'm just too curious, but I just want to. I'm going to try the bowstring. Okay. The actual bow. And... You try the bowstring and you rake it across, and there is absolutely no sound. Not even the sound of the bow rubbing against the string. What the fuck? Weird. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it back down now. What the Oh, uh, that's going to bug me as well. A violin that makes no sound? Do an intelligence roll. Both of us or just keep? Yeah, you can both. You can all do it if you're in the room. Uh, 43 out of 75 to pass. Yeah, I passed. I'm too wrapped up in my puzzle. Okay. <laughs> the two of you have the strangest feeling that if nothing is happening here, Something may be happening somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> you mean the sound goes someplace else? No matter how hard you try, you can't get any sound or vibration. I mean, the string actually vibrates. We can see it. You can see it, but nothing. So we could be doing this, and it could be like destroying a building somewhere or causing an earthquake or... I think, you read too, I think you read too many books. 
I did say that. I did say that in character. I just said that. I just said that. Okay. Because <laughs> fuck. All right. Let's jump to the others for a bit. All right. Um, where do you want to go first? What is it? Uh, we uh, need the uh, medical instruments first if we're going to uh, do a decent uh, workup of those samples. So. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh, this is the address for the community college. You want to look okay. that up on the map over there? Sure. You're going to be navigator. All right. I'll give you directions as best I can. All right. Um, this is actually a fairly sizable uh, community college. Um, and as you approach, um, you can see that there are still probably a few students, um, especially the ones that were living in the dorms, that are still here. Um, you're also pleasantly surprised to see that electricity, uh, at least in part of the campus, is still functioning. Um, it's obvious, too, perhaps, that no classes are going to be held because uh, most of the teachers don't live on the campus. Mm. Um, so right. you're, you might just be able to just walk in. <laughs> All right, Forrest. I, I doubt I doubt breaking and entering is going to work. Well, I mean, I don't think we have to. Let's just uh, try the door here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's is get it, our story uh, we're, straight first. We're officials here. We can just say that we're here to commandeer some uh, supplies for use uh, for emergency medicine. We can. Mm, let's try to let's try to avoid commandeering. Uh, let's let's ask if they want to donate some supplies for a uh, a medical go bag that we can what use while we're to... wandering around town. Either way, it'll work. Let's uh, let's see if anybody's actually going to stop us first. I mean, it's it's a it's an emergency, so yep, we can appeal to people's uh, beneficial nature. All right. Yep. I'm doing the uh, trek to success, which is basically just, uh, what is it, uh, got my badge displayed and just walking fastly as if I own the place. Okay. Um, you start to walk around. Do a luck roll. Both of us? Uh, just him at the moment. Okay. Pass. He's kind of leading the way. All right. You only encounter along the way one student. Um, uh, a young fellow. Uh, he just seems to be going somewhere. You know, he doesn't look like he's got books in his hand or anything like that. But it gives you the opportunity to just say, "Excuse me, where is what the science lab?" Yeah. Yeah. Biology department. Right. Medical. The anything. science building. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And he points you in the direction. Science building's over there. Um, just you know, take a left turn. Uh, when you get to uh, the the men's dorm over at uh, uh, McPhillian Hall, and uh, just it's right there. All right, we make our way there. All right, so you go by the building, uh, you see the dorms, and uh, you find the science building. Now, when you go into the science building, there are it's not dark inside, but it's not brightly lit like normal operation. Um, they've got basically what I don't want you to call them, janitor lights. Yeah, uh, the emergency lights. Because uh, nobody's using the building at the moment, but the doors aren't locked. Okay, going in? Yep. You think maybe off in the distance you can hear somebody waxing the floors, but mm -hmm. that's, that's about it. Yeah, my problem, just loading up and getting out. All right. Um... Any faculty aside uh, no. from the, the janitor? No faculty is here at this time. Dang. Um, classes seem to have all been canceled. Obviously, there's nothing going on. What's the What's the camera situation like? Hmm. There's no cameras. Okay. Is it? Uh, yeah, we'll worry about that later. This is uh, kind of an in and out operation here. And you're well, also in a, you're also we... in a town where city funding is not very good, so. We might be able to get keys from the 
from the janitor and avoid avoid any breaking. I mean, so far we haven't run into a single locked door. Let's just see if we can like get in there and get out without anybody noticing. All right. Fair. All right. Uh, it's like a three-story building. Um, yeah. But you can see from the signs on the wall, uh, where do you want to go like to biology or do you want to go to uh, chemistry or... Uh, let's let's start with biology. We start with um, biology. Yeah, okay. yeah that's uh, that's tools that we can both recognize. All right. Uh, we'll say you find it. It's on the it's on the second level. Uh, you go down the hallway. There's nobody in there. Uh, you get to the door, but the door is locked. Hmm. You can see through the glass window on the door right into the classroom. Mm -hmm. Is it the um, wired glass? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The uh, crisscrossy wired glass. Uh, you can see that there are cabinets on the walls with all kinds of scientific equipment. And Which way does the door open? Door opens outward towards you. Okay. So in case... The hinges are the on hinges the outside. Off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In case we could take the hinges off. Yeah, I don't have a uh, screwdriver to do that. Uh, what is it? Uh, now I think it's a good uh, opportunity to go find that janitor. Yeah, that would be the easiest. All right. Mm. And wouldn't require us uh, dismantling a door with a set of car keys. Um, that is the easiest thing to find because you can hear the, the machine. And as you're walking down the hall towards him, his back is to you and he's doing the polishing the floor with the big spinny disc and he's got earphones on so he doesn't hear you. All um, right. Is he, is he grooving? Yeah, yeah, he's kind of dancing with the... I guess he's going along. And as he turns around and sees that. you, he jumps, you know. Uh, I'll whoa, give him a whoa, whoa. Friendly wave. And he's, uh, uh, yeah, um, can I help you folks? Sir, would you like to serve your country? <laughs> um, are you going to draft me? No, no, no. Uh, we're, we're just here to requisition some supplies. We're throwing together a kind of a medical go bag. Oh, okay. I'd flash the FEMA badge. Um, well, the medical, you know, school is down there. Do, what do you need? Yeah, we we're we're heading there afterwards. We don't want to we don't want to take uh, too much of the actual medical equipment because that's going to actually get sent to the camp. Okay. So, um, what do you need from me? Uh, do you want to let us into a, a lab so we can? Oh, uh, oh, okay. Grab some scalpels yeah. and stuff. What, which one do you need? I direct him up to the lab we were looking at. All right. Well, he's got a yeah. He's got a keychain. Mm -hmm. Says, "All right, yeah." Um, well, what do you think about this? Uh, you look like you're not from here, so um, you guys are FEMA. Uh, yep. What do you think of all this? It's awful, isn't it? It's nasty. Yeah. It's nasty. We're just uh, you know the barely ride getting in some here of the campus hours. Where it was just barely uh, getting some of the campus electricity. Yeah, we did a uh, similar operation up in Chicken, Alaska. Alaska? Wow, I always wanted to go to Alaska. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was, it was a no joke. It was darker up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, you went in the winter? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Old Town uh, up and moves, uh, what is it, uh, come winter. Uh, blizzard snowed everybody in. Had to oh, wow. go in, get everybody out. Wow. It was a nightmare. Um, this room, the on the biology. Land tanks. Here you go. And locks the right. door. Thank you. Uh, do you guys need any help? Uh, um, we should be good. I, yeah, I think I think we're good. Uh, what are you yeah, listening to? Um, John Denver. I don't know. I don't oh, know good choice. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll if, we'll we'll lock up when when we leave. All right. All right. Thanks. Hey, can I yeah. see your badges? Sure. Sure. What's this? Where's your badges? No. <laughs> um, all right. So I didn't he print says, mine out. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, he says, he says, just tell me when you're leaving and I'll lock back up. Sure thing. And he goes back You'll downstairs. Do. All right. So what do you want to get? What sort of equipment? Uh, what is it? Uh, we need basically tools that we can do a dissection. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking scalpels and scalpel, uh, forceps, yeah, scissors. The little needle thing in the end of a stick. 
Yeah. So tweeze things apart. I mean, you could microscope a knife. Ooh, yeah. a microscope would be good. Microscope yeah. would be good. There's so heavy. Uh, I mean, you could put yeah. that in the bag, but you know. um, they've got the stereo microscope. Do they have a do they have a yeah. jar of formaldehyde just sitting sitting around? Sure, you can find that. But that'd be good to put the thing in. That'll work. And um, what Once is it? Once we're done uh, dissecting it. Well, and since it's a biology lab, uh, would they have uh, any kind of uh, what is it uh, saws or anything like that if we have to get get through bone? They don't have anything that big in here. Okay, didn't think so, but yeah. Uh, you could get through, well, you could get something like look, that at the hardware store. Oh yeah. sure. And we're probably going to have to. Um, what is it? Yep. Uh, unless you want to try again for the uh, medical uh, department, uh, I think we should. Uh, what is it? Count ourselves lucky and uh, mm -hmm. get on with it. All right. Yeah. Well, how how confident are you with uh, the stuff we've got right now? I mean, I could do some good work with this. What is it? Uh, I'm I'm pretty confident as long as we don't have to do like a chemical analysis or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Which right. uh, chemical analysis might be useful on that orange crap. Uh, which it's a biology department. They probably have a couple of pH strips. Yeah, and... let's. Uh, I'll go and I'll go and see if I can find some solvents. All right. Yeah. Let's just say that you find everything that you need. Okay. 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 You, you don't want to list off things? No. <laughs> you can make a list for, for later reference. That's fine. Okay. Right. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll grab all that and put it in a bag and get ready to go. All right. Oh, man, they've got a whole bottle of hand wavium over here. <laughs> hand get a wavium. jar of elbow grease there, too. Um. All right, so you, you tell the janitor, he locks up, you leave. Um, Shake his hand. Yeah. You've done a great service for your country today, sir. He laughs, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then maybe an hour later, he thinks, hey, what if they were just crooks? <laughs> <laughs> um. You didn't go to the hardware store, you said. Yep. No, we haven't yet. Well, I, that's what you were going to do next. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to... Uh, now, either... the gun thing is a problem. You can't buy a gun. It, yeah. You know, not mm -hmm. over the counter in one day. In the This is 2017. Well, um, I definitely want either like a saw or a set of bolt cutters. Do a, do a luck roll to see if you can get in the building without attracting any attention. Uh, and if we're in the hardware store, we might be able to pick up uh, a nail gun. Yep, 29, I got in. All right. Uh, your luck is that you get there and the power is still out at this place. So there's no alarm, there's no, there's no way to get in and there's no people around. Uh, okay. So I'll just say that you get in rather easily. Uh, by some means, and you wanted to get, you know, once again, you can make a list of what you need if it's at a hardware store. Okay. All right. Uh, do they have right. Do they have a nail gun? Uh, yeah, they do, and in fact, they do have firearms, so mm. um, with a little ingenuity, you should be able to procure some firearms. A cold shotgun. Mm. Let's stick to Maybe two shotguns at most. We don't, because they're, Is it, uh, hard, in, in they're all, hard to conceal. Well, in all seriousness, we're going to be hunting something uh, in mm -hmm. the snow. We probably want uh, something with a scope. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, just one. Uh, hard to conceal, yes, but uh, it's probably going to be useful because we probably don't want to get too close to this thing. Yeah, we can conceal it in the car under, under blankets or something in the back seat. Yep. Okay. So two shotguns and a rifle. Yep. Okay. And uh, revolver. It'll work. 
a de you know, decent mid sized revolver. So like okay. 357 or something. All right. So I'll let you guys um, detail those uh, over the next break and you can, uh, you know, how much damage they do and so forth. Sure. Um, all right. You managed to get out of there and you managed to head back. I assume you're heading right back to the hotel. Uh, no, we're going uh, straight to the house to... Uh, You're going to the house to get more inf- more samples. Yeah, All right. I want to uh, look at the bodies and right. the uh, biological samples. It's not really a climax, but we'll go ahead and we'll end it there. And we'll pick back up with the puzzle box and the next item on the list and uh, back to uh, Skip Mill's house. Our players... Oops, where did it go? Our players included Brian Daly, Matt Ryan, Josh Harwood, and Ryan Sesney, and Ian Christensen, with yours truly as the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. We have a new patron, Grobzilla, has pledged three dollars a month to our group thank you so much Grazilla. if you'd like to support our show please visit our patreon account just a dollar to a month helps us a lot you can find a link in the description below like share and subscribe to our channel punch the bell icon with updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments we enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have this is tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of hp lovecraft and the call of the google role-playing game until next time good luck good gaming <laughs>